Welcome back to round three of the Southpaw Sessions. I'm Joe Levy. We're here at the YouTube space in New York City. What did you find when you were uh, involved in, in training? It just gives you a whole new appreciation, a whole different appreciation for what those guys go through and what they put their bodies through and just the craft of it. No, no matter how much you think you know, you know, about fighting until you've actually, until you know proper technique, proper stance, the way to throw, the proper way to throw a punch, the proper way to block a punch. Like it's just all that I thought I knew, I didn't really know, you know, going into it. And Emmanuel was one of the greatest trainers ever in history of boxing. So, um, you know, it was, it was super honor, him even coming to my house. He was like, he wants to come to my house to train me? I think there was a, there, it, it, for, there was a little toying around with the idea that he was going to actually get me to box at one point. You know, we had toyed mean, around, like joked around with the idea, but it wasn't anything that... You mean in public, sell tickets? Yeah, like actually, you know, I think there was a little bit, a piece of Emmanuel that w was like, I'm going to get him in the ring and, and actually have him do this. Because he joked about it a lot, but it was fun though. Did you find any parallels between the technique of boxing and the, the technique you bring to rhyming? I mean, I think just the dedication that it would take, the dedication it takes that those guys put themselves through, you know? It's so, you know, to be an athlete is a whole different thing, you know? It takes talent, but it also takes drive, it takes... Genetics. Genetics. <laughs> I want to talk a little more about the soundtrack. I don't. <laughs> Wait, where <laughs> are we? <laughs> Answer some so, questions. You want me to answer some questions? Can you? Soundtrack? Yeah. yeah. So what do Jake's you want to got know this. Jake's got this? Yeah. yeah. Now, what were, you, what were you going for when you were putting together the, the track list for this? I just, um, I wanted there to be, I wanted to be, um, I wanted so music to be, I wanted, there, pa I wanted there to be parallels yeah. with um, music, like lyrics and music. I wanted to put those two things. Morph them together. To get, to morph them together. Yeah in a, um, a short period of time that people could then relate, listen, to. relate to. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anything to add? Um, well, that, was pretty that pretty much, much covers that. I don't know what else you would say about that. Know, yeah. This is another thing, if you don't mind me adding this, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Go ahead. It's about the soundtrack. So yeah. I didn't want to step on your toes. With, you kinda, know what I'm saying? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Kind of. Go Jake ahead, doesn't like that shit. When you're give talking it, about his soundtrack, he try. doesn't like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I killed the movie, by the way. <laughs> you are amazing in the movie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Like, I've never seen him like that. He's like transformed. Right. Like, Dick, you can't even see me. You can't even. I've never it's even. It's almost like I'm not even honestly, there. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this. And to write for a performance like that where he looks like, have you ever, do you know that guy? He's this, his name's Jake Gillian, who I think, do you know, is that how you pronounce his name? Gillinger? You look just like that guy. Thanks, man. Yeah. I would kind of take that as a compliment. No problem. Sort of. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you were great in 8 Mile, too. Thanks, man. My, my, <clears throat> my best performance. Probably not, at, you know, the way I would have done it. You know what I'm saying? But you were really That's good, cool. though. You were good. But the soundtrack, though. For 8 Mile. For 8 Mile. <laughs> oh, we should, Wait, what? What movie is this? Detroit. Come on. Is a back. city <laughs> in the Midwest. <laughs> Go on, Detroit. The soundtrack to Southpaw. <laughs> right. Let's bring it back to that just for a second. Yes. Um, soundtrack to Southpaw, when you're putting it together, what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of records were you drawing on? What kind of record did you want to make? I had always to say parallels paralleled uh, my life to the story, the, the, the script of that movie. I like songs that remind you of the movie, you know, like The Breakfast Club or Eye of the Tiger. You know what I'm saying? That when, you, when you hear that song, it takes you back to the movie. One of the things that, that, that we had kind of loosely told everybody was like, it doesn't have to be about the movie, just as long as it fits the sentiment and the vibe of the movie. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it could have, been extremely corny if everybody 
tried to do that, you know what I'm saying, and, and make it just about that. But, but Try the to work theme, the word Billy or Hope into their song. Yeah, probably might not have been, I mean, depending on how it was done, probably might not have been the best idea and the way to go. But, um, you know, I just, I like songs that remind you, take you right back to the movie. So it's a, it's a music inspired by a soundtrack. Uh, did everyone involved who brought original tracks to it get a chance to see the movie then? A lot of people did. A lot of people saw the movie, man. Is that right? Yeah, a number of them saw it. I can't tell you <laughs> exactly how many, but definitely a number of them saw it. And mentioned that there was a, a push to actually get him in the ring to fight in public. What's the, what's the chance we'll see you fight in public? <laughs> I mean, uh, it just depends. Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, I love fighting. I mean, I don't know, it'd be interesting to try it's that. It's like a 17% chance. Yeah, I'd be saying about a 17% chance, yeah, say about a yeah. 17 chance yeah. is good. Maybe yeah. like a 7% chance, but yeah, 17 is optimistic. 17, yeah, it keeps people optimistic and hopeful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no pun intended. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's an F, fail. 17%, right? 17% is good. No, it's good. 17% chance that I'll probably get in the ring at some point uh, professionally. 50 cent. Is uh, one of your co-stars in the movie? Yes. Uh, plays your manager. Yes. Uh, also has a, a track on the album. Tell me about first meeting Fifty. Uh, he came to the gym when I was training one day. Antoine invited Fifty to the gym, and uh, I got out of the ring. I remember I'd finished my training session, and we went into the back of this, the gym I was training in. And Fifty just started talking. He started talking like my manager. I don't know if he had talked to Antoine about something, but he just started talking about the fight game. He talked about what he wanted to do with me as a fighter, and he was like in the space that we eventually shot the movie in, which was a lot of improvisation, a lot of playing around in the moment of like the reality of whatever was happening. And I just thought, wow, like. And when he's is, talking to you like he's your your manager, yeah. and he is in fact involved in the fight business, yeah. uh, that, that's one of his many business ventures. Yes. But what what's he saying to you? Oh man, he's talking to me like a lot of the things you hear in the movie. Things like he's like, oh Billy, he's calling me by my character's name already. He's like, oh Billy, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna get this. I already have this thing. He's like, I already have a deal lined up with HBO. You know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna get a deal lined up with HBO. And I'm gonna make a three fight deal. Like, boom. you know, he starts hmm. talking to me like that. So he starts improving with you. Oh yeah. On yeah. your first on your first meeting for South Park. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. He, he also improved with you parallels. on first meeting. Right. The parallels between <laughs> there's there's something to Crazy be said parallels. there about the parallels that morph together. He's not just your friend, man. The you other side of the coin. The other side of the coin, right. Um, <laughs> There's three sides to every coin. I was Wait, unaware where of that. The hell is... There's the one side, tails, heads, and then Detroit. I'm tripping out on you right now, man. Yeah, man. I'm f tripping. Yeah. 70% chance that I might just get, I might fight right now. 17% chance. I don't know. 70 or 17? Maybe with Paul, but I don't know. Right. Somebody. Yeah, somebody. Jake's fighting somebody here. Somebody. It's 17% chance. So I'm not going to get up out of my chair, but I'm thinking about it. It could be 17% out of 117%. <laughs> we don't know. I, I would say about this movie, there is something interesting about the movie and the soundtrack and how people respond to it. It's like, I've never felt like a, a film has brought all these people together in a way that, like, uh, you know, I, and that's that's a that's a testament, I think, a testament to the fact that the movie is is whether it's indirectly based a lot on him and who he is, who he is as a person and a father, whether what Antoine believes is being a father and being a parent, and what you give to your family and how you're devoted to them, how I believe in my family, like you know, that to me is what the movie's about. Ultimately, is about family and also about how hard you will fight for that. And I've never been in a film where it's brought different all these different people together in the way this movie has that's why i was saying i feel like there's so many people that would be able to relate to this film just because of what, what it's about and the struggle and how hard you would fight to get your family back and you know they just the, the, the entire theme of the movie so you don't, don't box you don't box from the south box stance. from the south Paul stance no that's neither do i and neither does billy hope south Paul, i think is more of a metaphor for the, the the things you have to do to switch up when life you know hits you with blows you know that you didn't expect and I think that's, that's really what the title is about. Um, and that's what it means to me, and I know that's what the movie is about. So. Well, on that note, we're going to leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, man. Cool. Thank you.